I am Indian by birth. Um, my cultural identity is also Indian. Uh, my race is also Indian. But more than half of my life I have spent outside. I identify as a Singaporean Malay. I have lived um, in Hong Kong. I have lived in London. And now I live in Singapore. Um, so my cultural identity has uh, has evolved and blended and I would say it is more international than just being an Indian. I live in Singapore and I have been living in Singapore since 2015. I am currently based in Singapore. It is a difficult question to, to answer. Um, it has been more than six years I've been living in Singapore. Most of my friends outside of my, my work colleagues um, are expatriates in Singapore. My kids, they go to international school. Um, I would not say that I feel as though I am local to Singapore. Um, only because of the way we have, uh, or I have, um, introduced uh, a lifestyle for myself as well as my family. I consider myself a local Singaporean. It is not about um, just not able to blend in with the culture in Singapore and feel like a local, but it has also been the choices I have made with respect to what um, how I would like to conduct myself in my life in Singapore. So no, I would not say I have, I feel like a local in Singapore. I see myself as a minority population in Singapore and I do know that in Singapore, Malays only take, uh, only form 13.5% of the population, whereas we have 74.3% of the population to be Chinese, of the Chinese race, um, and 9% of the Indian race. And then we have others as well. I do see myself in a minority population in Singapore. Um, not, there is, there are of course a, uh, a significant number of people in Singapore of Indian heritage, uh, with Indian culture and race. Um, but in my particular case, the, re the reason I feel a minority in Singapore is uh, a whole lot to do with how I have been treated uh, as a resident in Singapore. This has been magnified in the last one and a half years due to pandemic. And as a ordinary resident of Singapore, not being a citizen, not being a local, or not being a permanent resident has made um, life and travel inside and outside of Singapore quite difficult. Uh, and it has brought to bear the challenges uh, as a person uh, who does not belong to Singapore uh, and only live in Singapore to bear for me. Yes, I have experienced biases uh, as someone who is a Malay, as well as a Malay woman and someone who also wears a hijab. Uh, I have often uh, been told that I am very eloquent and smart uh, for a Malay woman, and it's always said in the context of surprise. Um, I have been told that, you know, I've been passed up on opportunities uh, in the past because I am different uh, from the majority in many spaces um, and I also like I recognize that um, a lot of people often um, do not um, a lot of people do realize that Malays do not actually uh, have a major representation in corporate uh, companies in Singapore um, and we can look at that through a socio-economic lens uh, where uh, the um, exposure to resources and experiences um, often keep them out of corporate uh, life and corporate uh, experiences.
or uh, resources? That is a good question. And I'll give you two examples. One from my days in Hong Kong. I spent 10 years in Hong Kong as well as an Indian. Um, and I would say I felt more of minority in Hong Kong than I have um, done in Singapore due to my race. Um, my very first work environment in Hong Kong, I experienced a negative bias towards me because I was an outsider. I was of a different race. And I was considered to be, um, if I can say so, inferior to uh, the local population, um, mostly because of my um, racial identity. Now at the, the stage in my life, in my career, I would say I'm very privileged. I um, run the Singapore office for my company. Um, I'm at a very different economic and financial status. Um, so being at, the, being at a position of privilege I would say either I'm ignoring the negative bias towards me, if there is any, um, but mostly, uh, as I said, it has been about my residential status uh, and a feeling of uh, that I do not belong uh, to Singapore. I would not like to generalize um, racism only to Singapore. I think racism is a, um, racism is human. Um, racial disparities are everywhere in the world, uh, including Singapore. Uh, we see this in, in, uh, in news articles, we see this in social media, um, we see um, certain races or people from certain races um, thinking of themselves as superior to others. We cannot condone it. As I said, I might not have seen it directly um, hurled towards me negatively. Yes, I think this is a conversation that is constantly robust and coming up in Singapore. And as a community and society, we are trying to uh, work with it and trying to manage how can we combat the discrimination and racism uh, that happens in a multiracial uh, society and we are uh, actively uh, trying to address it at many levels of society. I do believe that the responsibility to promote an inclusive society uh, falls on many different players, many different stakeholders in the ecosystem. Um, it has to be both, uh, holistic, it has to be a holistic approach, but it comes from the tone that's set by government uh, policies. Um, and then we also need to have uh, key players in the society, um, like uh, all of, uh, as including companies, uh, especially because companies are drivers of economy and they are also um, where a lot of adults spend a majority of their living day life, <laughs> day life uh, in and that is where a lot of their experiences are, a lot of their interactions are um, and if companies uh, remain siloed and uh, not uh, representative or inclusive then it is going to be really hard for us to be able to create an inclusive society because they do not have much spaces to interact with other people. Um, so companies do have a role to play, um, especially in creating the tone and in creating the spaces for people to be able to interact with each other, to learn from one another, as well as to actively create um, intentional policies that um, ensure that there's no discrimination or racism in terms of uh, promotion, retention, hiring. Um, and these are roles that companies can play to be a proactive uh, member of the civil society as well. Um, so that's what I believe in.